two foot press with Lovric yeah. and Del Piero up high. So if Del Piero doesn't play, I don't know who they'll play. Stop there, Jake. And you can see straight away there when they're playing out. I think they're very open for transition to attack. If you can get the ball in between from in behind their midfield, yep. their back four just drop. They drop and that should give Tommy a hell of a lot of space to do his work, huh? Yeah, yeah we've got to be strong here at the back. We've got to be good enough to go man on man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, keep our two holders just in front to cut out the passes into the striker's feet. Yeah. yeah, look, a lot of men forward in front of the ball and very open in midfield when you win it. And they'll struggle to get back. We all know Graham Arnold and the Mariners staff have planned thoroughly for this round five blockbuster against arch rivals Sydney FC. The big story, there's no Alessandro Del Piero tonight, but the Mariners looking to take down the Glamour Boys in the F3 derby. Welcome to Blue Tongue Central Coast Stadium. I'm Steve Allen and conditions absolutely perfect for a quality game of football. Great for McBreen. Chance here for the Mariners. And there they are, they're level. Thomas Rogic has his reward for his earlier good work. Big moment this in the New South Wales derby. Daniel McBreen scores in the corner. here, letsevsky has been rounded, Rogic will score, and he does! It is five for the Central Coast Mariners! What about that for a ball? Off the woodwork, and here by McGreen! The Central Coast Mariners are one of the most successful and consistent performers of Australia's A-League and despite battling against the demons of better resourced and wealthier clubs, have become a sporting anomaly with a formula for success and a location-based culture that is unparalleled in professional sport. Bounce, bounce, bounce. Oh, oh, oh. Ah! <laughs> Based 50 miles north of Sydney, Graham Arnold's football team and the Central Coast's only professional sporting club will navigate their way through the rigours of the A-League season and the off-field challenges as one of the country's smallest sporting organisations. This trick calls, uh, we call it the gun. Uh, no, not the gun. <laughs> Papas. Mikey. Oh. Hey, Tommy walks. His arms swing more than his legs. We're blessed with a beautiful environment here, so on a nice day we try to get here as often as possible after a game. What's that? He's launched himself from three metres! All right, we can do this. The challenge is to stay there, and everyone, now we've got a target on our back. For the first time, an A-League team have opened their doors to the code cameras, allowing the sporting public an insight into the team, the personalities, and the community that fuels the Mariners' successful culture. Keeping Graham Arnold has been a masterstroke for the Mariners. 
Oh, I lost it. That's uh, called catch and release. That's my drop for Abini. Bernie Abini scores. <laughs> Talk to you, bro. Uh, doing it every day, it just comes, you know, second nature. And... Welcome to The Code, life with the Mariners. Filmed over nine months on New South Wales' central coast, it takes viewers into the inner sanctum of Australia's most participated sport, behind the scenes of one of its most celebrated teams. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, six. Football players could be forgiven for feeling a little out of sync in September. Photo shoots and TV promos are a sign that the season is fast approaching. As the expectations on the 2012-13 Mariners are predictably lofty, the pre-kickoff tension often needs relieving. Enter Pioneer Mariner Adam Kwasnick. season has enabled the Mariners to hit the ground running and in the blink of an eye the season is underway. has produced mixed results, but a stint at number one on the table for over three months is about to begin. Alright, let's go, let's go. Alright guys, we're here at our training base, Central Coast Mariners. It's going to drift around and have a look what's going on. We'll start at um, down the back end of the sheds, I'm not sure. Who's in there? What's the password? Oos, is that good to view? No, nah, wrong one. This is our change rooms. As you can see, most of the boys have got all their stuff in here, all the boots and whatnot. Matty Ryan, how are you, bud? What's up, bro? Boys in the gym doing their work. Big Zachy boy. Jager. Brent just drifting as usual in the gym. Jager. Justin Passfield's future as a goalkeeper, rather than tour guide, is assured. But the star attraction in this production isn't the players, but instead the Mariners' Centre of Excellence, a state-of-the-art facility built only six months ago to host the Mariners' club, academy and visiting teams. Not as bad as your Barnet, mate, but there's the uh, schedule for the week. Is that Ollie's shoulder? Mikey. Ollie's new shoulder. That's about it, really. <laughs> My arms are killing me, so I'm out. the first probably three or four years we had 19 training venues you know we trained in every amateur park every council park on the coast I think now we've got a fantastic training facility probably the best in Australia you know but probably the only club in Australia that's got its own grounds great surface own offices 
in the last seven years, where the club's come from is amazing. And once you have the right place, you need to fill it with the right people. It's well documented we don't have the money that Sydney FC or Melbourne Victory have, but you know, I have uh, my staff. It was important to get uh, the staff in that I wanted. I got Phil Moss in from Manly uh, to be my assistant. Go on, yellow. Yes, Bernie. Someone stay high. Good, Bernie. Not only does his assistant coaching role, he does the set pieces, but also helps with part of the video work. John Crawley does the goalkeeper coaching as well as the, the tactical analysis of the videos. He had a great reputation of being an honest guy and a, a real good hard worker. It's a really uh, close-knit uh, coaching group. We are assistants but we all have a voice and uh, we all share in ideas and we all put forward our, our thoughts um, and that's what makes us uh, so successful. Maybe not so far that way you don't have to come all the way back. Come on, drop the shoulders right down. And Andrew Clark, uh, who was still a player at the time, um, gave him a tap on the shoulder and told him it was time to retire and to be the full-time uh, fitness coach. And uh, he does a marvellous job in uh, getting the players fit. Up and back, next person goes. All right, no ball, no ball. Come on, push! Graham Arnold has not only found the right people, but the best in their field. The coaching staff have been recruited for their innovation and reinvention resulting in a change of playing structure for the current season. We implemented a new playing system this year. Arnie wanted to re-challenge the players and the staff and uh, just look at ways and systems that may suit the personnel that we've got uh, more so than the, the narrow diamond that we played for the first two seasons. We just felt that there might be a, a better system to suit the cattle that we've got, so we went to uh, 4-2-3-1. You know, that takes time to, to coach and, and for players to adapt to a, a brand new system. So we always knew the first half of the season you know, would uh, take time for us to find our consistency of the last two years. Youth team tomorrow, uh, tomorrow are they? Four o'clock? Three o'clock. So I'll let players know, but I prefer if we can get everyone, everyone that's here tomorrow at Blue Tongue. Just to finish off, Matty, Tommy, congratulations. Soccer selection. Well done, and again, it's a like personal awards that Matty got the other night, it's about the team. Okay, off we go. Only eight weeks into the season, the need for consistency is handed a bittersweet blow, with two starting players called up to the Socceroos. But national honours are part of the Mariners' philosophy on nurturing talent. Play one or two touch in the tactics. Let everyone else do your running. The Mariners have given me an opportunity to play uh, they're obviously my first professional club and uh, they've, they've given me my first opportunity to get some game time so uh, that in itself was, was a big opportunity for me and I'm very thankful for that. Well obviously the Mariners were my first uh, pro professional football club and just the, the privilege of training um, in a, in a full-time environment like uh, any other full-time job uh, has enabled me to uh, work on my game and uh, become more consistent. I've got a lot of things to work on and I just feel very comfortable with, with where I am now, with the coaching staff behind me and, and the players around me that I'm able to, I guess, develop and progress as a player. Yeah, this is my third season now, it's uh, really helped me a lot and obviously the experience of the coaching staff there, and I feel that's yeah, really helped my game. Matt Ryan, I think you can remember that bit. That, that's the most difficult bit. <laughs> Hi, I'm Matt Ryan from the Central Coast Mariners, and I love football because I'm a very competitive person and I love to win. Also, having a great time with my mates day in, day out. Come the end of the year, if we're not in the same position, then. Uh, but as Matt Ryan discovers, uh, a higher profile means a higher demand for your services. In the, the Premiership, we've got depth in every position, and I mean, our defensive structure has always been the key for us. Um, every, uh, every week, get our game plan from Arnie and the coaching staff and try implement it as best we can. Thanks so much, Matt. Thanks, Aaron, no Thanks. problem. Good. Go on. Thank you. Oh, done. No, 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 no.
Did they make just, I fluked it, fluked it. <laughs> well, I didn't expect, yeah, so much PR to be involved with it all, to be honest. There's a large percentage of it is uh, socialising and networking with a lot of different people. You know, Gigi, how are you? Hey, it's definitely not easy work either. Um, uh, interacting with little kids and obviously adults as well, it's all uh, part of the job and uh, obviously it gets easier the more you do it. How you going champ? What's your name? Evan. Evan, nice to meet you mate. Want me sign off for you? You guys are flying, huh? Yeah. Hey, doing well at the moment, man. I haven't done nothing all year. But yeah, I know. That's I've awesome. just been, I think, on the saves, man. I, made, I might have made, like, I don't know. But you, you and the rest of the guys are all up there, man. I haven't done nothing, eh? What do you do? Like, you can't really complain no. about it too much because defensively you're doing a great job. Yeah. But then for you, I exactly. know, as a goalkeeper, you think, I want to at least you, touch the ball. Yeah, you want to you wanna impact the play yeah. a bit. So, yeah. but I don't know. Yeah. You can only do how much, what's the saying? You can only do as much as you ask. So. Yeah, exactly. The team returned to Blue Tongue Stadium to host the Brisbane Roar. The Mariners have not lost since round three, and a home victory will close the gap between first and second place. It will also be the last game for Tommy Rogic and Matt Ryan for three weeks. New South Wales Central Coast is the only region represented by a team in the A-League, but the location is more than a training base. It's a lifestyle change. Well, if you're from overseas, as I am um, from Holland, where nine or ten months out of a year it's raining and it's cold, and you come to a place like Terrigal or the Central Coast, and um, it's the other way around, nine or ten months the sun shines there and it's always warmer than 20, 20 degrees, and People are really laid back and relaxed in the Australian way and in a good way and yeah, it's, it's a fantastic place to come. Uh, I love the Central Coast, you know, beautiful beaches. It's a fairly small, it's a fairly small community which, um, which I love, you know, it's not too, too busy. It was kind of uh, an easy transition for me coming from the Sunshine Coast originally to the Central Coast. Um, both quite relaxing um, lifestyles. And a lifestyle experience on the water awaits some of the players and lucky fans during a rare day off. Well, we're going to try and catch a fish. The bigger the better, actually. The boys all seem keen and they're pumped up and they're ready to pull one in. We're fishing in the Hawkesbury River uh, primarily today. We'll probably go out, out to sea and out to the front around the Hawk, uh, Broken Bay. But we'll be chasing the big mulloway, which this area is famous for. The boys have actually caught a few of those before but we're going to see if we can top their personal best by getting a real big colour. I've got a couple of supporters with us. We've won a competition, a Facebook competition, and we're just out with Patrick and Troy. We've had a, a couple of days off now with the game, so it's a good chance for the boys just to relax, let their hair down, what they have of it. I don't have any, but the other boys do. And uh, yeah, just have a little bit of a relaxation session, a couple of supporters on the boat and just uh, just not think about football for a couple of days. Oh, Tubby fun, Taylor. Man. Oh, don't lose it. Beautiful. We've got hooked on something. It's a bit of an inquiry. Thought would, uh, it's going to be a bit of a drama here. Just trying to take it easy. I think I foul hooked it. Oh, and lost it. That's uh, called catch and release. When you're in a playful mood, they'll come right here, but um. I don't know if they're in a playful mood today, just the way they're all bunched up. There can be some newborn babies amongst them and they're just all herding together for protection. I'll move back over there. Some real baby ones there too. No, I think we'll head out the front and run some lures out for the, um, the surface fish. The afternoon also provides an ideal opportunity for two keen fans to get up close and personal with the team they support, as well as experiencing deep sea fishing for the first or even third time. I've been deep sea fishing a couple of times. Um, I just love being out in the water. So, I mean, on a day like today, this weather as it is, temperature as it is in these waters, it's absolutely amazing. 
been a fan since they first started. Um, it's great to have a team on the Central Coast that you can call, kind of call your own and support them. And it is great to see them outside of just football and on the pitch as we don't normally see them. So it's, you know, it's nice to see that non-football side of them. <laughs> All right, as you can see, we've come offshore here a little bit. We've come out from the river. We've come out to uh, McMaster's Beach out here. So we're just going to be trolling along the rocks, hopefully get a big kingy. We're coming here. We might need the net here. Here we are, we've got some colour. Here we are, guys. Little kingy. First one of the day. We've got to put your belt on, here. Big belt for Patrick, new belt. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. He's got to watch that lower back. He's getting on in years. And we've got to, we've got to protect his back, all right? You can tie his arm up so his arm doesn't fall off. It's hey? a bloody bonsai fish. Here he comes, he's got some colour. Bring him up, keep going. Yes. Woo! Yeah. Now, you can go back to sleep. now you can go back to sleep, Patrick. Good fish, good fish. Well done, Swanny. It's like to congratulate you. First fish of the day. I'll just set up a, a fishing rod and and know what to look for and it's great to learn of these guys and, uh, and be able to go out in the boat with them. It's, it's, it's like a dream come true for us. Patrick Zvansvek and Adriano Pellegrino have plied their trade around the footballing world and recognised the privilege of an outdoor coastal lifestyle. This alone has played a vital role in recruiting players to the Mariners. It has helped cultivate a culture of hard work but hard play of being serious without taking yourself too seriously. Of family, where everyone young and old is always welcome. But ultimately, this is a story of football, of a team that moves towards a round nine clash with Adelaide, the league leaders, and then beyond to a future which is yet unwritten, but one in which its fans will share the low points and celebrate the triumphs with some familiar famous faces and some mischief from a new foe emerging out of the West. Next time on The Code, Life with the Mariners. Who's my date normally? Mary Jane, I'm coming! <laughs> Woo! And as you can see, some of the punters have got um, the red robes on, but I'll not be wearing them, I can assure you. I'll leave the robes in the, in the wardrobe. So. <laughs> He's 35 and he said, you know, uh, what do I have to do to give him another year's contract? I said, get double figures and let's talk. Good afternoon, year three. You know, community is what we're all about, that's what we want to be known for. And I think we have uh, achieved that uh, in the eight years uh, that the Mariners have been around. I was only in the team for, I think, uh, two, two to three weeks before I had this uh, head, head, head collision.